welcome back to the Pillow Fort Podcast. It has uh, certainly been a minute, but we are back with a brand new series that we're going to go f- through, which is great. I am Luke, and with me is Kate. Um, it's just going to be the two of us this time. Um, and the series we're going to go through is One Piece. Uh, this is one of my favorite series for sure. Um, I think, Kate, even, this is this is probably up there on your list too, right? Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. It's definitely up there. Yeah, I am. So I, just like for background, I am totally caught up. I read week to week uh, One Piece. If you guys watch the weekly newsletters, obviously you know that. But I, so I'm caught up. Kate, where... I know you've read a, a good chunk of One Piece, but where, where is your cutoff line? Like, where, where, do, where have you left off? Yeah, so like my uh, cutoff point was after Water Seven, um, pretty like a little bit after Water Seven is when I stopped, um, and I just got busy with like college and everything. I just graduated from college, sure. so. I just got busy with like all my final stuff that I had to do and all that kind of, all those things. But um, yeah, so that's that's where I left off. Which obviously, you know, it's a decent portion in, but yeah. because of the length of one piece, I mean, it's at least <laughs> it's like <laughs> that's at least that's at least got to be if you got to like the end of our set, that's at least got to be like almost four hundred or probably more chapters. Like that's, I mean. That's nothing. Yeah. To, most manga are over by that time. Just like right. I'm looking at the <laughs> shelf I have here, and I'm like, most of these things are just are just done before that's even there. Um, right. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. Like, I mean, with One Piece, it's like the longest standing anime, right? Right. It's right. Still going. So. Oh, it's a, also it's a, a cool. lot of people are very intimidated by getting into it. Yeah. So. Listen. <laughs> listen. Let this be a message to the people. All six of you who are going to listen to this, I <laughs> read One Piece, please. It's so good. Don't let it scare you. I know it looks terror. It looks it looks big bad monster, but it's so fun. Anyway, that's a whole aside. But this is the perfect yeah. time anyway. So we're yeah. we're gonna do this in like really small chunks, um, and by that I just mean we're gonna kind of go arc by arc. Um, and some of these arcs, especially in the beginning, are just a little smaller. Um, so this week we're doing what's called the Romance Dawn arc, um, which is just chapters one through seven. So. Not a big, not a big, you know, chunk at all. So we can spend some time. What I like about that, though, is like we can kind of spend time kind of chewing on some of this stuff because I actually think that like One Piece, despite its like goofiness, I think it actually does present some really interesting, like almost like real life application stuff like that is interesting. And I like even in the first seven chapters, I found some of that and we'll obviously get into that. But but yeah, so but it's safe to say. That, that you like One Piece. You've been far enough in One Piece that it's safe oh, yeah. to say you're a fan of the show. You made oh, it yeah, You made absolutely. it pretty deep. Yeah. It's, like, honestly one of my favorite, like, comfort, like, mangas or, like, animes to watch because, like, I don't know why. It just gives me so much serotonin just to yeah. see them of and their crew and all of that. Like it's just so good, but it's very good. It's so good. Uh, yeah, it is. It is. That's a great way to describe it. Like a comfort. It like <laughs> feels comfy. Yeah. I love it. Um, and it, yeah, it is. It is what One Piece is. And we even both of us have watched the anime too, or a lot of the anime. I I actually haven't watched. You've actually probably watched more of the anime than I have. But it. Uh, yeah. I remember watching the anime with you as as kids for like a long time. Yeah. Um, like at least up through Alabasta. So. We've we've definitely yeah. even done that, so we we've got some interesting <laughs> interesting variants, but uh, yeah, I mean let's just let's just jump in. So what just brief like what are your initial thoughts on reading this arc about the series in general as we kind of go into it? I know that's kind of broad, but yeah. what do you got? Well, obviously, you know we know a little bit more about the series than somebody that's just jumping into it and hasn't read or watched it at all before. Um, but just going back, it's it's great to see Luffy's backstory happening mm. right away. Yeah. Obviously, not all of his backstory, but you know a good portion of what you need to get started on why he wants to be a pirate 
And I think that that's important because, um, at least in the anime, they kind of just start him out like, oh, he's already a pirate and he's just going and trying to collect his crew. Um, Yeah, they start with Alvita. In the manga. They start with Alvita and then they go back to tell you about Shanks. (laughs) Right. That's no way to start. That's no way to not even close. Yeah. Yeah. The anime did not have the best start, (laughs) admittedly. Uh, although Alvita, that's an interesting, you know, portion of it and everything. Sure, and sure. Especially the duality of, uh, him meeting Kobe, too, is, like, you know, his dream is to be one of the greatest Marines, while Luffy's dream is almost the polar opposite <laughs> right, of that. Right, right, yeah. And being we're the We're gonna be mortal pirates, enemies like... later in life, so <laughs> it's good that we're friends right. now, I guess? I don't know. I- exactly, yeah. So, I thought it was an amazing start, just to start with the reasons that he wants to be a pirate, and how he got introduced to pirates, just because, um, and that way, like, we also get that little portion at the beginning, too, about, uh, Goldie Roger, and, you know, like, his introduction, that he was the king of the pirates, and how the great pirate era, uh, in this universe started, so... I thought it was a really good um, introduction and just in those first seven chapters as well, like him collecting Zoro, his first crew member, yeah. is good as well because it, it sets the tone for like what he's going to continue to do is collect these people that he finds and you see that he has a very unorthodox way <laughs> <laughs> sure. of going sure. about uh, collecting crew members, but uh, it works. I mean, just the same. Uh, he doesn't... The right. Man, the, man, <laughs> the man has an unconventional method, but it, uh, it has gotten people on the boat. It so. works, yeah. <laughs> I mean, more than just him, we'll see in the future. But, yeah, sure. Um, yeah, maybe yeah, it's just him so. and Zoro. Yeah, you're right. We should pretend that we don't know. Maybe it's just him and Zoro for the rest of the series. That's <laughs> yeah, all we have. It's, it's probably just, you know, them two, you know? <laughs> the main villain of the series is Kobe. Don't don't let anybody tell right. you otherwise. He comes back. <laughs> main villain material, clearly. Main villain, absolutely. <laughs> he definitely seems like it right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, so like... Kind of narrowing in then on that first chapter, what are your thoughts on Luffy? Not just the first chapter, I, I apologize. It, like, right. just like kind of this whole arc, like obviously our introduction to Luffy. What, how do you feel about Luffy? What, what, give me some Luffy thoughts. Um, I like Luffy a lot. I think if I, if he was an actual person, right? That would be very scary to be around. Yeah, him, I'm terrifying. Like. Yeah, absolutely terrifying. Just because like he he is just like exuding like impulsiveness and adhd <laughs> it's a like, lot it's a lot i mean anytime so you much. stab your face to prove how tough you are is right that's a that's a yeah. that's a whole mood right there that's <laughs> like if the intro i get to a character is them stabbing themselves <laughs> in the face to yeah. prove how courageous they are I definitely know that this character isn't going to be, like, chill and mm-hmm. low-key. So, yeah, <laughs> so, yeah I, I thought it was a great in- introduction to his personality, though. Even though he's still a kid um, in those first couple of chapters, it's, like... I mean, he's still a kid, technically, I guess. Yeah, I guess he's only, first like, 15, chapters. so... Yeah, he's or only, 16, like... 16, something he's still, like that. Yeah, he's, like, a teenager, but, you know... Um, it's, it's still a great introduction, I think, to his personality, to his impulsiveness, and just seeing the backstory of the relationship that him and Shanks formed, and how a lot of the things that Shanks does and says and all of that reflect on the kind of pirate that he wants to be. Yeah. Because, I mean, it could have just as easily been, like... He could have encountered in his childhood really terrible pirates, and then maybe he wouldn't want to be the king of the pirates at that point, you know? But because oh, yeah. he You're encountered, right. you know, Shanks and his crew, it, it was almost like because of the good people that he saw that they were, he realized that pirates don't have to be this stereotype that the world has created them to be. Yeah. Yeah. 
and it, yeah, I think it informs like his whole character going forward and like how he tries to live his life. Um, yeah. But you did, you have touched on Shanks. Uh, what do you have? Do you have red hair? Before I get into like some things that I'm like itching to specifically hone in on, <laughs> do you have? Like, what are your thoughts on the Red Hair Pirates as as a whole that we got to see a little bit of yeah. in Chapter One, at least? Yeah, I I thoroughly enjoy all of the Red Hair Pirates just from from the very first scene where you see their reaction, all of their reactions when Luby snaps himself in the face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They're all like. Yeah. They all seemed like almost concerned parents, like for Luffy in <laughs> yeah, a way. I love that. Which, I love that they're like, yeah. "Oh my gosh, stop!" <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, they're like, "What are you doing?" Like, <laughs> way like, too that's much. That's not how you show that you're <laughs> courageous, Luffy. Like, no, don't do that. But yeah, it is funny because like Luffy's obviously a kid that doesn't have any clear uh, supervision when he's yeah, like yeah. going about this town um, other than uh, you know the barkeeper and the mayor of the town like those are the only two people that are really watching over him it seems like right. so it's really good that I think like red haired Shanks and all of his crew like they do that too when they come by the village like, they like to watch over him and make sure that he's doing okay, um, and all that stuff. And just the the introduction of the mountain bandits coming into the bar, um, and, you know, Shanks apologizes mm. to them because their crew drank up all the liquor and all yeah. that stuff. And then, like, the bandit just, like, beats him up, basically, or like, pours yeah. some stuff on him. and Smashes a bottle on his stuff. head. That's messed yeah. up. Yeah. Yeah, he smashes a bottle on his head, so that's that's not cool. I mean, obviously, perceivably, from Luffy's position, he's very distraught about this. So, uh, and they just all laugh it off, like Shanks included. Like the after after they leave, his whole crew like just cracks up, and mm -hmm. then like yeah. Shanks starts laughing. Um, and because it, that's because obviously they know about this concept that kind of that um there are battles worth fighting and battles that aren't worth fighting you know yeah um and obviously we see later on that they could have taken them down at any second that they wanted to um, <laughs> yeah clearly but, we do see that yes <laughs> where one of the crewmates ben beckman trashes the whole yes. uh, the whole group of mountain bandits by himself so yeah, by himself. So, and that's not even their captain no. <laughs> that's doing that. So, like that tells you that you know, obviously they have a lot of humor in them in the fact that they can laugh at when people like try to put them down and like make fun of them and stuff. But there are certain things like you know, friendship and defending your friends and the people that you love that will not be forgiven right yeah in this situation or maybe might be forgiven eventually but you're definitely gonna suffer <laughs> for sure. that yeah and yeah and we see that as like such uh like a characteristic of luffy going forward so yeah. so much just because that's just it seems like one of his main principles that he adopts is you know, I'm not, if somebody's just cracking a joke at me or making fun of me, like, I don't care. Yeah. Like, it's it's not that big of a deal. But if you start to, you know, mess with my friends or the people that I love, it's not going to be good for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, it's, um, see, I was trying to, oh, yeah, so, like, Shank, yeah, Shanks is, like, I, the quote here is, uh, Shanks after getting spilled the drink spill on him, he goes he just got some this is the official translation so when it says things like grog that's because Viz <laughs> decides to make some fun edits also I'm like I have the books right so that's what I'm reading and so every time I yeah. reach Zoro's name it says Zolo and I can't oh my I gosh. can't handle that but that's that's a mistake that Viz made in the beginning that they've just decided they're gonna double it's still 
it's still if you read the modern day chapters it's still zolo it's not they haven't changed it that's they've horrible. doubled down anyway that's not the point of this <laughs> but, but he says he says he just got some grog on me that's all uh needless killing doesn't make you a man um and I was like, right. so like, this is, that's what I, one of the things in this section that I definitely wanted to like, to, to, to discuss because yeah. this is a concept. This is like a real concept that Shanks has put forward of like, you know, major in the majors and minor in the minors and don't get those wires crossed. Like if it's not a big deal, don't worry about it. Let it go. You don't have to yeah. fight about every single thing. Um, yeah. You can let it roll off, but clearly, I mean, as we see, it's like, but if this rises to the level of something serious, then don't hold back either. Like, make, yeah. like, stop, stop what's happening. And like, yeah. it's just, it, it's a very interesting concept in life. And so I think it's, it's like, I've known several people who have read One Piece and uh, even myself included and taken this and been like, this is like a good life principle. Like, don't oh, yeah. let the little things mess you up like this. Yeah. And one of my questions, one of my questions, I was, I was interested to see what you thought about this, right? Because as I was reading it, I was thinking, do you think, like, as a whole, because you and I, I would consider you and I in the same, like, generation, right? I, mm -hmm. You know, we, we are siblings, so I would, you know, yes. we're probably in the same generation. <laughs> but... Familial wise, yeah, at least. we should be in the same. <laughs> we're in the same bracket, anyway. Yeah. I like. Do you think that our generation? I was thinking of like, is this a theme that is common now, or is it uncommon now? Like, do you think people think this know. way? Do you think people are like, okay? And I, I, st like, I guess I said our generation, but I don't necessarily mean that. It's just like, is this a thing that like people think? On the whole, do you think? Or do you think they don't? I I don't know. I think I weirdly enough like anime has like reflected and I think taught me a lot of like lessons that I apply to my own real life. Oh, for that... sure. <laughs> for absolute sure. <laughs> And, like, you wouldn't think, like, usually, like, pieces of media, they're not necessarily designed to do that. Most of the time, they're designed for entertainment. But I think just anime and manga has this completely different spin on it. Sure. Um, because, in part, especially with things like One Piece like this, you have to commit to reading so much or watching so much of this thing. Right. Um, and there are some, like, real deep life lessons that you can learn, absolutely, from this. But I think, honestly, in general, people don't think about this on a day-to-day -day basis. I don't yeah. think that they really do as much, because I don't see a whole lot of, like, people being like, okay, let's just, you know, let's pick our battles where we need to pick our battles and then put things down, mm. uh, you know, put down the weapons, basically, yeah. when we don't need to battle it out. And I think, like, especially with uh, politics and that oh kind my of gosh, thing, yeah. I think that it, it just gets so wrapped up and, like, nobody can have really, like, a debate so much anymore sure. as much as, like, a full-blown argument. Which, I mean, obviously sometimes, like, you need to draw the line, you know? Right, there are yeah. some things where you need to pick the battle and you need right. to say, like, no, you know, that's not right at all, what you're saying. Like, it's, it's actually wrong and it hurts people or, you know, whatever you gotta say about it. Sure. But I think there are definitely some concepts where, like, people take it uh, further than they really need to or they just like battle people on things that you know you know that the other person isn't listening to the other side or maybe neither of the yeah. people are really listening <laughs> i think a lot of cases that happens too is like nobody's listening and everybody's just kind of yelling at each other <laughs> what's true so i definitely yeah i definitely think that not a lot of people think about that 
like in their day-to-day -day lives like oh yeah I'm gonna go through this day and you know I'm gonna choose my battles I'm gonna choose where I really take a stand and I'm gonna choose what you know I let go yeah yeah okay so you're saying like you don't think this like people think about it so this is not like a conscious thing yeah I don't like, think oftentimes yeah. that people do I think there definitely are some people, plenty of people, I would say, out there that do. Sure. But sure. I would say for for the vast majority, um, especially just with everything that can get like heightened with social media and right. all that stuff and not having to be face to face with somebody when you almost quarrel with them in a way, <laughs> sure, sure. you know, <laughs> like that can cause a whole nother slew of issues of just because most of the percentage of the communication that we do as people is nonverbal. Sure. So there's big problems that in lie then when all we can see is the verbal part of right. what people are saying. So if we don't see the rest of that, things can definitely get misconstrued. And I think, you know, as a society, we're starting to um, accept this idea that almost everything has to be a battle. And, you know, you have to go to war for almost everything. Yeah. Which, you know, it is true for some things, sure. I think, for sure. Well, that's the whole but majoring on the majors thing. That's what he's saying about, right, like, yeah. listen, you touch my, my boy, you're going to get hurt. Like, Right. Exactly. So I think like people often think about most things as majors and they right. don't really think about that there is like a minors category, you know, right. in that way of that you don't have to put everything on this super high pedestal. Like some things can be important to you and then some things can be very important to you, you know? Sure, sure. <laughs> Yeah, I so I have I have a hypothesis and I'm gonna throw it out there and I wanna see what you think. I so I think that on like I'm making obviously pretty big generalizations, right? So bear yeah, with me. I mean here. we all kind of are, so Yeah, bear with <laughs> me here. But like I think that like most so like I I'm taking social media out of it because I think you're absolutely right. When like when oh, you yeah. are separated from your physicality, all of a sudden you mm -hmm. think you're the biggest guy in the yard. Like like, right. because you don't have to prove that you're not like because there's nothing right. to to stop that so all of a sudden yeah you can be as big as you want you can say whatever you want because you're not in front of the dude but like yeah i think like so like in-person interactions i think that our i think our generation is a little bit better about mm. not about letting some of the minor things go than maybe the one yeah. before us. I think the one before us has an even harder time letting things go, even in person. Like letting those yeah. little things slip. Um, I, again, like I said, major generalities. But not obviously not all people are like this. But I think, and the yeah. reason I say that, but what I really wonder about, right, is the reason why it seems like we tend to let things go more and i wonder if the reason yeah. isn't if i can use the analogy of the story here if the reason isn't we are we're scared of the mountain bandit and we don't know like what he can do so when he drops so yeah. when he hits us with the alcohol we like laugh it off and let it go because we we're scared that he can take us out like, right. because we don't know, and we're like, what if he's, like, crazy strong, and I just didn't know, and then, and then I made a big fuss about it, and got, got my face wiped on the ground by the mountain bit, like, right. so I might as well just laugh it off, and I, I don't think that, that, well, I, I don't, I know that's not what Shanks is doing in this situation, he is perfectly clear that he could mop this guy in the next week if he needed to, he just, he lets it go because it's not worth it. Which is very yeah. different than I let it go because I'm scared, <laughs> like that you're going to kill me. Like that's that's really. Yeah. But I like I was thinking about it this week and I was like I I don't know. I mean obviously I think it's probably different for each person, right? Like you know it's a little you know some people are probably scared and other people are probably just like yeah, I'll let it go. But I I wonder yeah. if it's not on the whole that our generation is just a little bit more scared of the mountain bandit. 
that comes into yeah. the bar, you know? And that's why we shut up, because yeah. we're a little scared of yeah. him. I think I would definitely agree with that, honestly. Like, I was just talking about, I think more, you know, us as a general society, a general right, population, right, right, right. you know? Not really specifying it to the specific generations, but I, I definitely do agree that I think our generation is more keen on letting things go because of that reason, right? Because right. like we're we're scared that the other person is stronger than us or the other person will actually do something bad. Like I think it's so funny cuz I see like memes and stuff all the mm -hmm. time that like it's always like the millennial generation will never send their food back if they got the right thing, right. You know? <laughs> if they got the wrong thing, and I'm like that's so true. Yo, because yeah. I don't I don't want to inconvenience somebody else. Right. I'm just going to eat it. I I'm just going to eat that yeah. price. Like, I'm just going <laughs> to go with it. I'm just going to eat it. Like, I'm not going to fight the battle. And it's not, like, and it's not even a, a decision, I don't think, for us most of the time where we think about, oh, is this battle worth fighting or not worth fighting? Like, yeah. a lot of times it's just, it's either purely, you know, I don't think I can win this battle. Mm -hmm. Or I don't want to inconvenience other people yeah. by trying to start this battle most <laughs> yeah. of the time. I'd hate to put the mountain like... bandit out, you know? I'd hate to right, I'd hate yeah. for him to go out of his way after he spilled alcohol on me. That'd be a bummer. <laughs> like 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 if this is a millennial, it's like, you know, he just really wanted his booze yeah, and he, you I... know, I don't wanna I, really, we were in the wrong. Yeah, we drank yeah, all it's our in. bad. You know, <laughs> if we really think about it, it's this was my fault. I think. Right. Yeah. No, you're yeah. absolutely right. I, it's it's an incredibly yeah. relatable feeling that you're talking about. But. <laughs> yeah, like we often just I feel like p pivot like the blame to ourselves to avoid the battle because that way like it's easier. Like it does it does make things easier sometimes. Yeah. Because then you don't have to go into the battle. Yeah, know? oh yeah. Because then we just don't have to do it. Yeah. We don't have to do it. So we're like, this. yep, this is cool. <laughs> I don't have to, to do the battle. Sure. Because, you know, it was my fault anyways. So. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. It's, it's probably us. Anyway, we'll just leave. It's probably me. <laughs> Somebody give me a wet towel. I'll mop this up and then we'll head out. Right. I, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, now that we yeah, now that we've spent half an hour talking about the first five pages, um, right. <laughs> we're on a good pace. Uh, I have another one, by the way, in this chapter. To, to talk about this is not even the only one in this chapter that I have. Uh, so maybe the coolest quote ever that I'm not even going to read from the Viz translation because it doesn't do it right, but I can remember it from I the think. anime. Um is guns aren't for threats and oh, yeah. this is the <laughs> dopest <laughs> thing in the world i like he's here's what's terrifying about it right lucky Roo is so fat and he's just right there all of a sudden right and killed the man's he's dead so fast. he's just like <laughs> he was there and murdered a dude it was that fast yeah. like Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yes. But this, this, That's like yeah. definitely one of my favorite quotes. <laughs> oh, it's like one of the coolest things in manga that I've seen. <laughs> it's like, it's so really, it, it's amazing. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, like, you can kind of tell, right? He gets a gun pointed at his head and he's yeah. super nonchalant about it, right? So you can kind of tell this is yeah. this is probably going to go his re his way. But, yeah. but like, man, that was the fastest tone shift to murder I've ever seen. Like... <laughs> it was like that was a really <laughs> shifted way up very fast. He was like, "Yeah, let the I little mean, things go," and then a dude is dead, and then like six other dudes yes. are dead. That works like so so well with the statement. Yeah, though, because like it, it works so in such beautiful unison with each other because it's so sudden yeah. and so shocking, but it works so well with that. Like the guns are for threats, you know. And right. or guns are for action, sorry. Yeah. But guns yeah, like it works so well because it happens so fast and so you really like feel the statement uh -huh. as well as like read it or hear it, whatever you're doing. But right. yeah. Yeah, I just like I and we like this is probably not gonna be a long conversation, but we 
Uh, this might be a good way for, for, for people to look at, at weapons in general. Yes. You know? Mm -hmm. I think that if we all just were like, this is, this is for practical <laughs> <maybe not> use. <laughs> like, I, you know what I mean? Like, I think some people yeah. are out here, like, uh, like using it as a threat. And I'm like, yes. listen, I don't know. You know, is it, do, are we not yeah. serious enough about it is my question. Like, are we not yeah. being, like, taking it that seriously? That, like, what it is is, like, a, a tool to kill a guy? That we have, yeah. you know, like. I feel like half of the time, like that's the problem. Why, like eighty percent or whatever it is of gun accidents happen in the home, right? Is because like people don't take it seriously. Like people don't right. like think about it. <laughs> like they're they don't think about it. Like oh, this is something that is intended, especially if you're buying a gun or whatever to protect your home, sure. to protect your family, sure. whatever you're doing. Um, you know, like, this is, this is a tool to kill people. Right. And so, like, we need to be super careful with this. Right. Because yeah. we don't want anything to happen that's not, that it's not intended right. for. Like, to kill somebody that might be attempting to kill you right. or your family or whatever. Like. <laughs> and what a tragedy that is. And we don't have, like, this is weird to go this right. far. But, like. It is, like, terrible. <laughs> it's a terrible thing that happens all the time, yes. which is so upsetting. Yeah. <clears throat> and I don't want to seem like... I like So I ha I don't have any guns, but I have... I am yeah. still thoroughly considering buying one for, like, home my home defense, right? And so, like, I'm right. in no way against weaponry here. I'm just saying yeah. that, like... Yeah, that's not what There I'm is, saying. like, right. a whole subset, it seems, of people that are like, look at this new toy I bought. And I'm like, maybe we right. shouldn't look at it that way. That seems like that's a tough way to look at like a weapon, a, a, a tool designed to murder people. Like, right. I'm like, look at this. You like, I, and I'm like, I've shotguns before and it is super fun. I understand the impulse, but like, again, this is what it, it, it does murder things. That's what, that's yes. what it does. <laughs> so like, it, it does. Just, like treat it like it murders things. Yeah, maybe, you know? Sure. Especially, like, you know, people do say things like that. Like, look at this new yeah. toy I bought. Like, look at my new whatever, you know? And I'm like, why are you even calling it, like, a toy? Yeah, it's not a, it's not a, it's <laughs> like, not a toy. That can mess a guy up. That's not a toy. Yeah. If, if it can put holes <laughs> in me, I don't count it as a toy. I don't... <laughs> If it can take my actual life, yeah, it's yeah. not a toy. If there's, a, if there's like a high probability that I will die in the implementation of this toy, I don't think it's a toy. Right. Yeah. Anyway, I think you just like I, I like, it's it's a it it is like an amazingly cool moment in the manga itself, yes. and like I think it does actually yeah. say a point that's like kind of valid. Um, yeah. Not to, again, not to spend 10 years on that as well, <laughs> but because we're doing so great with time. Um, yeah, we're doing great. <laughs> uh, so this, this will probably be quicker, I think. But so Shanks, after saving Luffy, stares at the sea monster, right? Gives him the stink eye. Mm. And this sea monster, well, I can only assume poops his pants. Even though he's not wearing pants, that doesn't quite make sense. But he, he like he like pees in the water, I guess, and like swims away, right? He's terrified. Yeah. Um, do you I and I will not be answering this question, but I am so curious yeah. to to see what you think happened there. Like what is <laughs> what is going on? Because the sea monster just ate his arm. Like it's just it's still yeah. chewing on his arm. Like when this happens. So I'm so curious to see what you think is happening. Yeah, um, I don't really know because even as as far as I got yeah. with uh like reading it and everything, I I still don't know <laughs> at the point yeah. where I got to. So, um obviously I think it's it is some kind of ability or power sure. but it, it but it's hard for me because it's like it has to be something because seeing the rest of this world right it has to be something that normal humans can obtain like it has to be something like that and sure. obviously you know shanks isn't the most normal human but sure <laughs> I mean. but like he doesn't have a devil fruit at the time at least right. because we know we see him swimming so like exactly. 
Yeah. We know he doesn't have a devil he, fruit. He jumps into the water, yeah, to save Luffy, so we know that he can at least swim so he doesn't have a devil fruit. Um, but yeah, I think it, it has to be some kind of um, ability that um, he has learned probably from years and years of training sure. somehow. Or, you know, just, I don't, I don't really know other than that, sure. <laughs> like, sure. really what it, what it could be, because, I mean, he, the, the sea monster did bite his arm off. Yeah. Two point whatever yeah, seconds Yeah, it's, it's quick. It can't be that long. <laughs> like, this is like pass number two the sea monster's making. He's, he's just looped yeah, around. And like, and you can see before the eye contact happens that he is, he's ready yeah. to go oh, in for, for sure. another bite. Like, he's. He's ready to eat both of them at that point. He's not concerned about, about he's, anything. He's not concerned. But then, you know, he like he shits himself or whatever. Yeah. Poops <laughs> those pants. Man. He gets this he gets the st- <laughs> those pants, those fish pants. He's pooping those fish pants. Those fish pants that he's wearing. <laughs> <laughs> It's a very, it's a very uh, all across the board <laughs> podcast we have here. It's very. We went from like philosophically, should we let small things go, to pooping in fish pants. Yeah. This is where we are. Yeah, it's pooping in fish pants. It's a, it's a full roster. Here <laughs> I on think, the it, I think we cover a good spectrum <laughs> of things that could happen. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you don't. We have I mean, humor <laughs> and philosophy. Yes, yeah, come for it all. You know, come for the humor, stay for the philosophy, or vice versa. Whatever you need to do, or but whatever your whatever thing gets is. you in the door, I'm here for you. Yeah, but <laughs> um, yeah, I I don't expect you, you. Obviously, you don't know what what's happening, but like, I I was just interested to see if you had like if you did have a guess. I I didn't. I don't know really what I was expecting you to say, but. I, I just I like it's super interesting and there's gonna be like multiple points there's gonna be like multiple points in this series where I'm gonna be like ah what was that and you're gonna be like like because here's the thing right here's the thing I'm thoroughly convinced um that Oda Oda has an explanation for all of these things, right? I think that there's ever, yeah. and we're gonna meet things that like even like we still don't know about. We're gonna encounter like later down the road, right? But I am yeah. thoroughly convinced that like Oda in his head, even if he doesn't say it to us, he has some kind of like this is why this works. It's so crazy to me too, just because of how long this has been going on yeah that you know he he can contain all of those things like in his brain you know it's obviously not probably just in his brain he's sure. probably written down all of these things and planned a lot of this stuff but just that his mind can conceive of this idea that happens so early on and then not even address it until right. so so much later yeah <laughs> like, yeah. like it's, so incredibly it's, long Yes. It's just such a good trope to me. Yeah. I oh. love it when any author does that. It's it just feels so good. O- but yeah. Oda <laughs> Oda is the best manga maybe ever. Like Oda's Oda's quite amazing. But I uh yeah. So the last <laughs> so before we finally move away from chapter one, um <laughs> the last I have less to say about the other ones, to be fair. I have less to say okay. about everything else. But <laughs> um, uh, Luffy, at like the very end of the chapter, right, as he's setting out, says, I want, like, I don't know exactly what he says, but he says, like, I want, like, ten crew members, right? And yeah. the One Piece YouTube community, if you will, has decided, like, uh, not all of them, but a lot of them are, like, this is, like, canon knowledge. This means that there will be ten crew members total, yeah. and we're just waiting to fill yeah. that roster out. How do you feel about that? Are you th- you think that what he's what Oda did here is predict exactly the number, or do you think it's like a around this number? I don't know because I think just because of how Luffy's brain works, he's going to probably find exactly ten members yeah, seem and then like stop that. trying to find members. Yeah, but the thing is, is about like. Luffy's personality is that I feel like he would continue to let people on his crew 
if he found oh, yeah. them to be like very useful or just you know he lets people join for the randomest reasons but... <laughs> oh it gets really fun <laughs> later oh it gets really fun <laughs> but um yeah but just like just because of how his personality is i think that there's definitely a possibility that there will end up being more than 10. Sure. I definitely think he's at least going to get to 10, though. Okay, all right. Nice. I like that. Yeah, I think it will be I think it will be 10, and I think Yeah. I have a guess as to who they all are. I mean, I know who 9 of them, 9 of the 10 are. I just I have a guess right. to who that final one is. But I could be dead wrong, and there could be like 30, but I highly doubt that. Yeah. But yeah, I don't think it's gonna be, be a small many, crew. <laughs> it's gonna be a small crew yeah. because it's supposed to feel like a family. Like it's, uh, it, you know, yeah. I think it's gonna be small. But I, yeah, um, yeah, I was just interested to see what you think. And then, so like with, so as I've come to, you know, do like we, my weekly newsletter stuff and like get into weekly Shonen Jump and everything, the the first chapter of a manga is so like vital for for mangas, yeah. right? And to, like, rope people in and to get people going, there's a few freaks like me in the world who will read everything in the magazine every week, but we don't. There's not a lot of us. And so, like, I mean, I'm sure there's yeah, more of them English. in Japan, but, like, it's not. In English, it's, like, me, I think, is the only person. I, I'm not sure there's anyone else who, who yeah. does, who reads everything. But, um, but so, like, chapter ones are, like, super important because, like, if I'm going to keep going or not follow this I usually judge that based on chapter one um, so how do you think it did as an intro chapter to the series especially like knowing what you know about the series how does this does this represent where we're going well you think or not so well I think it does a pretty good job of representing where we're going um, just because like I said before, we get all that background as to why Luffy is doing what his do he's doing, why his goals are the way his goals are, um, and all that. And it really sets the tone of uh, the series to me, which is largely, you know, adventure, like adventuring sure. into the unknown. The like that's theme. what most of the series is about, honestly. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Because most of the time, you know, even when he gets other people, that's what it's about. It's about, you know, not really knowing what they're going into, but pushing forward anyways. Mm -hmm. And I think that that is very well represented in this chapter, um, as well as getting Luffy's backstory, or at least a piece of it. You know, seeing Shanks, who's already a developed, you know, pirate in the pirate era, sure. um, and all that good stuff. So I definitely think it's a good intro and a good way to like hook people in, especially with the very first panels being the main <laughs> character of the CV series stabbing himself in the face. What a perfect way That's to start. definitely <laughs> what a perfect way to start. This guy is a moron, and you're gonna love him. He That's is... what's going on here. <laughs> He is thick in the head, yeah. and this guy, <laughs> this guy did not eat his Wheaties every morning. He, he did, did not eat his Wheaties. The brain food was he lacking. Not, he definitely does not have, which is funny, because, I mean, he eats a lot of food just in general. Oh, for so sure. You would think he My man can pack it in. <laughs> and and never gains a pound. No. Which, you know, Well, here's jelly, what's but... hilarious about that. <laughs> it's like, because his body's made of rubber... And right. like, we talk, like, you'll see this later, too. He can literally eat enough to just keep expanding himself. Right. Because it just, yeah. his stomach just stretches. It doesn't, like, stop just him. stretches. So he can just yeah. keep going. And then he digest. His yeah. metabolism is insane. So he just can digest it all. <laughs> it, does, it doesn't really, like, make sense in our real world. But, like, it's really funny to see. But yeah. anyway, we're not even there. Um, yeah, I think this is a really good first chapter. I think this, like, paints the picture of where we're going super well. Um, yeah. And, yeah, it just sets the tone really, really nicely, I think. Um, but that is more than enough about chapter one, for sure. <laughs> we've done... We've put in some work on chapter nope. one. Um, and we can move on now. 
to uh, Kobe thoughts. How do you feel about Kobe? I'm not even. I mean, you can throw Alveda thoughts in here if you want to, because I'm not even gonna touch Alveda. Yeah. But like, yeah. Co uh, Kobe clearly is our main acquisition in that little. I think it's like one chapter. Right. I don't think it's longer than one chapter, but it's not. I don't think it is. Um, yeah. But Co yeah. So Kobe is there. How do you feel yeah. about our pink-haired wonder? Kobe himself. <laughs> well, um, obviously, you know, Kobe, you see, he's almost like the polar opposite that Luffy was as a kid. Yeah, it's perfect. <laughs> it's, it's perfect foil. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> he's almost just the antithesis of what Luffy was like, you know, as a child. Like, Luffy as a child, he wanted to be the king of the pirates still. Um, and now, obviously, like, Kobe, he wants to be like a really great marine um so it's just the thing is is he's very whiny and i remember oh. <laughs> king like yeah, yeah he's really annoying like in <laughs> when yeah. i like watched it and like read it and did all that stuff for the first time sure. but then i also have to factor in the the fact that he is an actual child sure, <laughs> and, sure he is. i mean that's, so, that's true <laughs> Who was like kidnapped and is traumatized every single day it's tough. by this it's a tough crew. life for sure. <laughs> so, um, definitely not the easiest, you know, childhood or whatever. So, I, I understand why his personality is the way that it is. Um, and the differences that I see for sure after he meets Luffy. Um, is very night and day, oh, honestly. Sure. Um, because just after Luffy comes in, after Luffy defends him, um, and, you know, tells him <laughs> a child that he should be willing to die <laughs> for, you know, <laughs> his dreams. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> which, it's a tough which, sell, <laughs> Luffy, but okay. <laughs> which, I mean, like, in regular life, I would be like, no, don't tell yeah. children. <laughs> Yeah, it might, be, it might cause dreams. problems, actually. <laughs> because that might, yeah, that'll cause some issues. But, you know, in the <laughs> in the manga universe that we're in, I think it's okay. But um, just the fact that he changes completely after being told that and after, you know, he really sees Luffy living that out in the way that he just barrels through things, um, you yeah. know, to achieve his dreams, it, whether or not he knows what he's getting himself into. Um, and, like, that's something that I think Kobe is just so inspired by, to the point where he is able to actually stand up to Alveda uh, and, like, the crew and all of them. And, like, that's, like, such an important point for his character development because yeah. he'll need that, you know, going forward and joining the Marines and pushing forward into his own dream. Um, right. Yeah, uh, I definitely liked him a lot more after, you know, his viewpoint changed sure, a little yeah. bit. After he wasn't um, a whiny, whiny little baby, I also liked him more, yeah. <laughs> I, I think I agree. everybody's kind of like, yeah, you like him more. But, I mean, he still has, like, fear, it seems like. Like, Luffy almost just charges into things, like, with no fear at all. Yeah, I would, <laughs> I would, like... even, I would even feel safe to drop the almost <laughs> off that sentence. He just does charge in yeah, to he things. Does. He, <laughs> does, he does every single time. <laughs> if he's like, I don't like this thing, he will hit it. He will punch it with his he fist. Has, yeah. He, he has no fear, honestly. Yeah, <laughs> Luffy could do with some fear. <laughs> Luffy's got a problem. Yeah, he, he does, because he, he almost dies a lot. But, it's know. upsetting about it. <laughs> I, yeah, no, I, so I, like, I relate a little bit with Kobe, I feel like, in yeah. some ways. Um, and I think what I really like about, like, like it, him and this arc, right? Because um, we do actually see him again later in the series. Um, I don't think that you've even gotten to that point, though. Um, I don't know if you remember seeing him again or not, but... Um, I did, Okay, you I'm did. I'm not okay. sure if that was actual stuff or, like, filler stuff. Oh, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah, you probably... That's, that's, that's actual. We'll get to cover pages, too. I don't, there weren't any cover pages in this arc, but, like, obviously we'll talk about them when they come up, but... 
Because Oda is the... Oh, Oda's amazing. Anyway. Uh, he's a great author. But Kobe... Uh, I like that Kobe is still, like, afraid, right? I like that Kobe yeah. has to, like, kind of, like... He is manning up, right? Like, this clearly has changed his outlook on life. He he wants to follow his dream, but, like, it's difficult. And I think that's, like, real and, like, kind of nice to yeah. see. Like, because I, I would be... I would be seriously concerned if I encountered a Luffy in life, right? Yeah. I would be <laughs> very concerned that they would be in jail. I, I They're probably already in jail, to be fair. They probably are, yeah. <laughs> I, but, like, but, like, Kobe's a very realistic, like, yeah, of course he's terrified, but he still says, like, I'm not following you anymore, Alveda. Like, it's like, and yeah, he's, yeah. like, very scared, which makes sense because he cannot back that up, but he's just standing for his dream, and, like, I like that. Which yeah. brings me to yet another <laughs> conversation of, is there a time, do you think, like, this, this statement that Luffy makes about, like, he's, about, he's, like, very flippant about, listen, I'm going to chase this dream, and if I die doing that, I die. It's okay. He's yeah. not at all concerned about that, which I think is really cool. I, it, every time I read it or watch it, it always comes across as, like, a cool thing to me, like, a, a, like, a, like an inspiring thing. But I wonder what you think about, is there a time that you ought to hang up the towel, you know? And is that time before death is what I mean. So, like, <laughs> so like I mean, like, is there, like, if you, like, you know, if you know, if you, like, set on a thing, right? Like, I'm, I'm going to do this. I'm sure I want to do this. This is what I should do. You know, like, yeah, it could be yeah. anything, you know, either a job, like, you know, some kind of career or, you know, anything, right? Like, if you're set right. on a dream, should you, is it, do you think you should divert from it if you have to? Or, or is Luffy right? And should you keep pursuing that, you know, should you keep running down that road no matter what hits you? Yeah. I don't know. It's, it's kind of like a hard thing to think about just because... Definitely. There aren't, I would say, at least in our modern today society, there aren't, I don't think, that many dreams that people have that would actually cost them their life. In yeah, most that's cases, fair. Right? That's fair. But, like, <laughs> which is why I was trying to, like, get it out of, like, the like the life or death problem. Um, right. Obviously, unless, like, <laughs> if you were, like, I want to be, like, a, a high-ranking military member, I guess maybe... That would involve right, you in yeah. some form being in combat, but, like, for the most part, you're probably not going to get stabbed for, like, wanting to franchise a Chick-fil-A. Like... Right. I, that was a weird <laughs> dream to have, but, like... <laughs> but, hey, maybe somebody's dream is to franchise Chick-fil-A. Good for you. Doing... <laughs> sell the Lord's Chicken out here, but... I, I just... Yeah, it's weird. Right. I don't know why yeah. I went to that, but... But, like, you know what I mean. <laughs> like, is there, like... Yeah. Is there a point where yeah. it's not, like... And then is it worth it? Yeah. Because I, I'm afraid, right? Because, like, I think I do know what I want to do. Like, what I should be doing, right? And so I, like, yeah. I'm going to pursue that. Yeah. Right? And, like, it, it looks different. You know what I mean? I'm not saying, like, run headlong into danger. But, like... I'm I, like you pursue this thing and not everybody knows what they want to do anyway so I like you know this is obviously different for everybody but but like I feel like if if I were to give that up right if I were to like be like you know what I'm fine just doing whatever you know yeah. just like working and and getting by I, I feel like I would lose like like a little bit like a piece of like what I am you know what I mean I don't know if this makes yeah. any sense and so like that's yeah, why no, I'm that, like I think Luffy that's... might be on to something here that he's so oh, yeah. willing to sacrifice anything and that it's like it's okay if he's sac if he doesn't even if he doesn't make yeah. it he's like I did my best yeah I don't know I think that it's definitely a good point of view to have when you have a dream that you really really want to pursue right. or you think that it's what you're supposed to be doing whatever it is yeah. you know um 
I think that it's good to, you know, not let anything stand in your way when it comes to that. And just, you know, being able to have that clarity of, um, you know, this is the dream that I want to accomplish and nothing's going to stand in my way of getting to that. I think that that's something that's really important to hold on to when you have a dream because I think otherwise most of the time it could honestly just fall apart on its own. Right. Just yeah. because if you're not, you know, if you're not always striving for that, if you're not, and obviously, you know, I don't mean like 24 hours a day or striving for that or whatever. Never it is. sleep uh, again. Obviously. Don't do right, it. Sleep yeah. is a myth. Yeah. <laughs> Don't sleep. That's what Luffy don't means. Don't sleep, don't eat, <laughs> don't, don't do anything. 24-7. <laughs> the, the, the sea monster's first mistake was he pooped his fish pants. No time right, for fish yeah. poop. Yeah, like, I don't like the whole, like, mentality that a lot of people that, you know, are, like, very wealthy say, like, oh, you have to grind 24-7 or whatever sure, it is sure. to accomplish your dreams. Like, I think it's okay to hold on to the principle in your mind that there's nothing that's going to stop me from achieving this. And I think that that's oftentimes enough to make you pursue your dreams. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's very interesting. I'm sorry. I was, I <laughs> clearly was off in space there, <laughs> but that's okay. Uh, no, yeah, I just, I really like this quote of Luffy's. I think it's interesting. Yeah. And I think that it's like, it's, good. it's like a double-edged sword in that I think there's right. like a lot of truth to it, but I think also yeah. you could kneecap yourself with it. <laughs> yeah. Also, if your dream is to be like the number one serial killer, maybe just don't Yeah, do don't that. do that. <laughs> let me be the first to <laughs> let you know. Again, if somehow we have we have welcomed into this into this pillow fort the one guy whose dream it is have, to be a but. serial killer if we have if you're listening maybe don't you know maybe don't maybe just just <laughs> maybe don't. get a different dream yeah maybe could i convince you to have a different dream i i hope that i can it's like please, so casual like, please don't, maybe don't kill a lot of people please don't kill anyone if i could really yeah. Don't broaden that any, out even yeah. just don't kill <laughs> let's draw the line at any yeah let's, let's put that line right at murder at all and yeah we'll go from there but listen I, you know there's a place for everybody all right i don't know where your place is but it's not in an alley murdering somebody so don't do that no <laughs> um, speaking of murderous intent um how mm. do you feel about zoro <laughs> and I think that is a very appropriate segue, by the way. <laughs> I was going to say, what a segue. That was beautiful. <laughs> I, that's a very appropriate segue. <laughs> yeah, Zoro's definitely murdered a lot of people. So. <laughs> Zoro's, Zoro's got some bodies. And he's... Yeah, he's got he's got lots of bodies. And he's in this situation he's about to get murdered. Yeah. Sure. So. <laughs> yeah, he's about to be a body. That's never want that. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's funny that, um, you know, like, he has this persona largely that, you know, he's, like, this demon almost. Like, yeah. that's what people refer people to him as. People are freaked out like, by him. Yeah. Just because, um, and I mean, like, his abilities are obviously very amazing. Right. And, you know, he's an incredible swordsman and all that stuff. But just, like, people classify him in, in this whole different, you know species of like not even being a human anymore which right. is like very interesting to me that you know that's the you know outward look that he has like Zoro has to me always been like one of my favorite crew members for sure yeah um just because like you know he he went from this life of being a pirate hunter like and you know basically finding the people that he is now and yeah. <laughs> you know like killing them and like turning them in and getting a reward for it and whatever um and like we learn about his backstory and his very very sad backstory yeah, it's a bummer. um it's a definitely a bummer. yeah 
and like a lot of the concepts that you know he grew up on and he was taught and he has his own goals of becoming you know the greatest swordsman in the world um and he feels like you know that's a goal that he has to accomplish now so like much yeah. like luffy you know who has this goal of being you know the pirate king um it's just they both have goals that seem unattainable um, but they're both gonna push head forward into those goals no matter what it takes. And, you know, in this situation for Zoro, that meant he's, he was like, I will starve, be starved, like, for however many days it needs to happen, um, so that I yeah. can reach my goals, so that I can keep pushing forward. Like, as long as they don't kill me, I'm fine. Like, I will keep pushing forward. Yeah. Um, and obviously, you know, that falls apart because, you know, Helmuppo, his actual goals are to, to kill him in, like, three days or whatever, um, and yeah. obviously, like, they try to do it sooner than that, even, um, because, uh, Kobe's trying to let him out, um, and all that stuff, but yeah, I really like Zoro as a character, yeah. um, just because of, like, where he's been and where he is now. You see a lot of uh, character development in that, and then you see the outside view of him being this demon, and then you see how he actually is, and mm. you see, like, oh, he's not really a demon, like, he's just a person that's going to do, like we were just talking about, you know, anything to achieve his goals. Yeah. I think, I think that this is one of the things that Oda is actually really good at doing. Okay, I... I say that like this is like one of the things that Oda's good at doing. Oda is like the best, <laughs> as I've said several times already. But I uh, like I think he's really good at like giving you the legend of a person in this world, like yes. talking about like. And so he builds this image up in your mind, right, of like this legendary status, right? And like most of that isn't even inaccurate. Zoro really is like this crazy strong bounty hunter, but like, yeah. but then he like is able to then humanize those characters in a way that's like right. really interesting like like the fact that Zoro eats the these like rice balls that were already bad like they already tasted bad because yeah. you cooked them wrong and then they were in the right. dirt and he still eats them it's like right. what a way what a like what a quick way to humanize who he is to me right Absolutely. and then when he says like yeah. tell her I ate them all and they were delicious like it's like what a good way to like human because before you're like oh maybe he really is this monster but like no right. like it it we find that out like pretty quickly now I'm like I'm gonna skip around in my notes a little bit because I want to talk more about Zoro honestly but <laughs> um I so here's what I hate right now nah, yeah. you know what we're gonna yeah I <laughs> it's, I'm sorry but it's okay. <laughs> they're not they have not given this man a choice Zoro has no intention of becoming an outlaw at all like no. Zoro does not want to break the law right yeah. he doesn't like clearly he's like I don't want to be a pirate because that's not my goal anyway right like he's like it's right. better if I'm just not like against the whole world government like <laughs> he's like which is true I mean it's an not accurate yet. statement <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you, you, you're going places, Zoro, but it's, uh, he, uh, but, like, they're not, like, what other option does he have? Like, yeah, he doesn't. He, like, this is why he's, like, when he's, like, he's got the, he's got, he's got all those marine swords, like, and he's, like, talking oh to gosh. Luffy, uh, like, he's, like, yeah. I guess I'm a pirate now, like, yeah. I, like because like what's the other option? Like is he he's just gonna yeah. die? Like no. Right. So of course he becomes he's not a pirate. Die. He's like this is legitimately the best option I have right now is to go with this yeah. insane kid in a hat <laughs> and like travel the world. I like. Because Luffy's seriously like, oh yeah, the only conditions in which I'm helping you. Is yeah, in yeah. Group. <laughs> I will leave you to die unless you. I will leave you to die. <laughs> come, come with me. I. It's not. I just like. It's so. It's so upsetting because it's so like. It's like. It's like the what if scenario for Zoro's life did not have to go here. You know. Right. It's like why? Why did this have to happen? Um. Yeah. 
but before Nobody I knew. before I go into the backstory, uh, tell me, give me your thoughts on both Helmeppo and Captain Morgan. Uh, I will oh say boy. that Helmeppo is a character <laughs> uh, near and dear to my heart because um, <laughs> any time that my wife wants to anger me, she says that I'm like Helmeppo. This is this is what she says. She says you're you're being very Helmeppo like. Or she'll say like, I think your char- the One Piece character you're most like is Helmeppo. Like, she does this all the time. So I have I have a deep affinity for Helmeppo in my oh life. My An upsetting affinity for Helmeppo. I'm always angry about it. But but yeah, what yeah. Do, what do you think about these two? Both of them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, being called uh, like Helmeppo is never a good. It's thing. like the greatest One Piece insult you could give to someone. I it's so right. bad. Anyway, because like he has like almost all of like the opposite attributes that like Luffy has basically. Yeah. Because he's he's not brave. No, no. <laughs> he's no. not tough. He's not like strong. He's not really willing to stand up for, like, whatever he believes in. Yeah. He just goes to his dad and is like, you have to take care of this person for me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, and obviously, you know, like, Axan Morgan, um, he's, like, he's very, he seems very done with Alpapo, too. <laughs> Even yeah. though he's his own son, like, he seems, like, very much so, like, I would, I would oh, actually kill you yeah. if Mor- you weren't my Morgan son. Morgan is like, like <laughs> I really don't even like you. Like, <laughs> like, Helmeppo rolls in, like, Daddy, please! Daddy! Yeah. You've got to stop the big bad people! <laughs> I told you he was a bad guy! I sneezed like, shut up, on Helmeppo. my shoe, Daddy! <laughs> like, and, like, Morgan is, <laughs> I love that Morgan is, like, Morgan is, like, Shut up! I hate <laughs> having to take care of you. I just right. like, and like, yeah. I, isn't at one point? Doesn't he at one point say, "Did you kill the girl?" And Helmeppo even is like, right. "No, I didn't murder a she's child. A, she's like, a little girl." <laughs> he's like, "That's a lot, Morgan." That's, I yeah, Morgan like, was a lot. I oh I didn't. I have not quite felt this way about Morgan before. But rereading it this time, I was like. <laughs> Morgan is insane. Like, Morgan's like yeah. the great me, it's and like, I'm like, this is a lot. Because after like you, you know, get into the series a little bit more, it like yeah. you see a lot of these other villains, right? That are obviously more intimidating, seemingly oh, than sure. you know Morgan. So I think like I also like I kind of just forgot like how much of a dick he is basically yeah, yeah. <laughs> like he like he like he killed some like one of his men like immediately yeah. for like questioning him like at all like he was like no you're dead he hacked him down because, with his axe like, hand you questioned me first of like, all you the yeah. dude wears an axe like to yes. do paperwork like, yes. he's, like that <laughs> he's pushing papers with an axe on the other hand <laughs> Like you know, you know somebody's not chill when no. like, that's, <laughs> not that's at all. what they're like, and also just like getting this like huge gold statue of himself just up. and all that stuff, and like making his you know crewmen uh, like put it up and all that. Like it's just like you can tell that he has very much taken over the mentality of he's like the tyrant of this island. Like yeah, oh anything, yeah, for sure. Or like the dictator or whatever it might be. You know, like yeah. he he is in control, and anybody that would oppose that, whether it be one of his own men or a little girl, right? Yeah, <laughs> like they all have to die, and that's his like point of view. And, I mean, that's a large reason, you know, I think when he's defeated, that even the Marines, they're not upset about it. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) The lieutenant who takes over the base is like, no, you, you, I mean, you really helped us out here. This could have been bad. (laughs) Right. He wanted us to kill a little girl, man. Like, it was was messed up. At one point, he orders them to kill themselves. And, like, several of them are loaded up, ready to go. Pull up their guns. And I'm, and Luffy's like, what the hell are you doing? This is not not it, fam. Like, this is, please stop. This is not it. I like, I like, what I do like about this is, is it gives Kobe an opportunity, opportunity to be like, 
Like, of course he's, like, very upset by this, right? Because he idolizes the Marines. Yeah. Like, he wants to be a Marine. Um, yeah. And so, like, of course he's, like, upset. Um, yeah. Because, like, they're, 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 like, ruining the name of that. And so, like, obviously he leaves the island yeah. and it seems like the other guys are not like that. So it'll be okay. You know? Yeah. But uh, I wish that this was a unique situation that we're going to see in the <laughs> Marines. It is not. But... I hope I wish that this was the first marine that we saw that we were like that's weird I will say I'm thinking in the future and we'll have to like update this right as we get to new marines but like Morgan may be the most unhinged like he's pretty there's like a screw like there's like several screws loose in Morgan's head whereas like other characters I'm like I understand why you're doing this you're clearly a bad guy but I get why you're doing this Morgan's like, right. what? Why have you, like, created a kingdom on this island? Like, what What are you doing yeah. here? Like, other Marines that we see in the series, obviously a lot of them are, like, terrible because, I mean, we're supposed to be rooting for the pirates, sure, right? Yeah. Like, that's the whole point. Is that, like, we're rooting technically for, like, the bad right. guys or whatever <laughs> of this world. Yeah. But, like, <laughs> I mean... The thing is, is I don't think any of the rest of those guys, though, are like, yeah, go and kill a girl, a little yeah. child, because, like, they defied me. Right. Like, a lot of them, like, they have, like, goals that they're trying to achieve right. or whatever, and that's what's driving them forward, but they still have, like, a little bit of a conscience, in a sense, most of the time. Yeah. But, like, Morgan, he is just, like, completely unhinged, and it's an interesting introduction to like the first marine lieutenant that we ever meet yeah. you know oh morgan's a captain oh yeah morgan yeah, is a captain sorry, which captain. is insane because we meet yeah. another captain at the end of this arc and this that yeah. fight would be over in five seconds but anyway <laughs> we'll get there when we get there but i um and not at the end of this arc at the end of the saga the east blue saga yeah. Like, I, I can't, it, it makes no sense that they're the same rank. Although it does, mm-hmm. and this is crazy. I've got so many, like, Morgan conspiracy theories that I have in my head <laughs> that I'll, like, slowly spit out as we keep going. Because, like, because, like there's going to be more East Blue arcs where I'm like, you see that? See, Morgan's involved. See Morgan's in here. See Morgan's ah. doing some stuff. Ah. Yeah. Ah. Yeah, <laughs> so... <laughs> um, but uh, going into the what is an extremely brief backstory for Zoro. Um, oh, yeah. Super brief. Okay, Kuina, right? Kuina, Zoro's Aww. rival. Super sad. Um, is, this, is this a real issue? All right. So, like, her, the main dilemma being I'm a chick and eventually you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna surpass me. Here's my question. Is this yeah. a legitimate thing? Yeah. Do you think um, that Kuina is correct when she says this? I think, you know, in part she definitely is. Um Well sure. sure. I would say if this is the if this is the real world like that we're talking about or whatever, like it definitely would be, right? Right. Yeah, like that sure, yeah. you know, because in our world at least, you know, you know, although, like, women are striving for equality, not quite there yet, all that kind of stuff, but, like, (laughs) because we're in the fictional universe of One Piece, where we see other women who are, like, fully grown women, but can still, like, kick ass, I guess. (laughs) I don't know how else to put it, really, but, like, um, I would say, like, she's definitely justified in the way that you know, she realizes that Zoro's physical, like, body when he's a man right. may be stronger than her own physical body, you know? Sure. And that's, like, that could be a real issue for her um, going forward. Um, so I definitely do think, you know, she's justified in saying that, um, but it may just be the wrong context for me yeah. <laughs> for her to say that to him. Uh, considering that she did just beat him. Here's my, yeah, here's my issue, right? Here's my issue with this, Like, it's, yeah, my thing is, it's, like, it's the right, 
like it, I think it's correct the concept wise sure. um, for like most of the time. I just don't think it's the right scenario to bring that up. Sure, sure. <laughs> Here's the thing: it's like so both of these both of these children at the time, by the way, are yes. are like they're they're beating full grown adults in sword fights, right? So like yeah. they're like these are clearly unnaturally gifted children, right? Both of them, both yeah. Kuina and Zoro. But Kuina is more yeah. skilled, clearly, right? Because she beat him like every time. So like yeah. my thought is, yeah, she's right in that like Zoro, if they're both going to be the greatest swordsman in the world, right? If that's the aim, yeah. Zoro will eventually become physically stronger than Kuina, right? I'm fine with that. Yeah, I'm with exactly. that. I get that. But first of all, Kuina's yeah. not going to get any physically weaker than she is now. She's still going to get stronger than yeah. she is now. She's just yeah. Zoro will <laughs> eclipse her at some point. But then, right. then I go to the fact that is so in swordsmanship, right? Is it not yeah. an equally valid claim to say the more that skill plays a huge part? in whether right. you could call yourself the greatest swordsman or not, right? Like, it's not just I can swing the sword harder than you, you know? Yeah. It's like, that's part of it, clearly. Definitely. But, like, we're not just, like, having a deadlifting contest. We're, like, yeah. having, a like, a <laughs> fight. So I'm like, I don't know. It's like, when she's just, like, throwing in the towel, like, I'm gonna get boobs later in life, and that's really gonna mess this whole swordsman thing up. <laughs> like, when, like, when she says that, I'm like... But like, she does. <laughs> you could still be s extremely yeah. skilled. Like, you could legitimately be the greatest swordsman on the on the planet. You just wouldn't be yeah. the physically strong. Like, if you had an arm wrestling match with another person, you might lose, I guess. But even then, right. yeah, I I just like. But that doesn't matter. Right. I mean, in this you're universe, still the greatest. Like <laughs> you're still the greatest swordsman yeah. in the world because you're the you and no and one can why. beat you in a sword fight. That's the point. Yeah. Like, the thing is, is about, like, especially, like, fictional universes that are built like this, is, like, you, like, f first of all, yeah, I completely agree. Like, yeah. to be a good swordsman, you don't have to be the physically strongest person right. in the room all the time, right? Like, you definitely don't have to, to do that to have the skills to be there. Um, but, like, just in these, like, fictional universes, like... You know, like, there doesn't actually have to be, like, a physical difference between yeah. <laughs> men and women. Because oh, sure. it's a fictional universe, right? Yeah. I guess so, I like, assume... when you think about it... Yeah. They were using it's the like, template. when you think about... Right. Like, they're obviously using right. the template of, like, this is the pirate era or whatever. Yeah. And we're still in the world, but there are, like, some weird things going on. Like, devil fruits and all that stuff. Yeah. You know, but, Yeah, wait a um, minute. Hold the whole phone, though. <laughs> Let's bring yeah, devil like she fruits can eat into devil this. Fruit. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's... And then actually be as strong. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Potentially. So, like, the thing is, is because it, it is in this universe, I don't really think it's fair yeah. that she says that. Because, like, there are, like, insinuating circumstances. Like, she could eat a devil fruit right. and be stronger than. Any man like instantly, she like instantly, she could do that. Like one bite of a fruit, and it's done. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I just, I like this. The reading it this time, I was really like, Queen, I don't even think you're right about this. I think <laughs> yeah, you're just like, right. and it's, it's so upsetting for you, the winner. To, like, I'm so with Zoro when he's like, shut up, you just <laughs> won. Shut up. <laughs> like, you, Shut, this yeah. is so unfair to me. Oh, yeah. This is so unfair yeah. because I just kept, I keep losing. And you're saying like, yeah. oh, sometime I'm going to be weaker. He's like, if I beat you, I'm going to beat you straight up. <laughs> don't do this to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's like, don't make excuses. Yeah. Don't just say you're going to beat me because you'll have boobs yeah. one yeah. day. <laughs> it's not the boobs. If I beat you, I'm better. <laughs> yeah. Work? And obviously, like, Zoro's a little salty, yeah, right? Because yeah. he did just get beat. But, like, Words to yeah, live by, I definitely Zoro. don't think, like, that doesn't have to be true sure. because of the universe that they're in, for sure. sure. I, I don't think that it has to be, you know? That's so, what I'm like. like <laughs> this, is not, this is not an accurate statement, Kalina. You need I'm to... like, that's, that's pretty rude to yeah. tell Zoro. <laughs> yeah, Kalina, this is not, yeah. 
Yeah, uh, and then uh, if we could just skip forward to uh, she fell down some stairs and died. Right. Um, I'm just gonna ask: Do you think Queen is dead? And I'm, I say <laughs> <No>. this, I <laughs> say this with full confidence that like I don't know the answer to this. Like we still don't know, right? right? Yeah. I just um, this feels well, so fishy. It's not <laughs> funny. Like. <laughs> It's like obviously, you know, like we saw like there was a panel that had like her body or whatever and it had something covering her eyes, you know. Like I don't know that because like when they're like, "Oh yeah, she fell down some stairs." Oh my gosh, and that that's is her how body. She died. I'm like, yeah, yeah, it is her body. Ugh. So, I'm I'm like pretty sure dead, that right? she is actually dead, but the thing is is like because of how skilled she was mm -hmm. as a swordsman, I would be like, I would think that your reflexes. Yeah, there's no way. There's no <laughs> even, way. Even when falling down the stairs, like, it's going to be better than, like, 90% of the people that fall down stairs, yeah. right? So, like, I think it's definitely a lot less likely that she would have died like that. And considering, like, probably 70% of people that die falling down stairs are, like, 90 and above. Like, I think Queen right. should make yeah. it. Like, like, not a child. It's just like, <laughs> I, I, I think there's funny business at play here. And let me tell you who I don't trust in all of this. I don't trust your dad. I don't trust, mm. I don't trust the dojo master guy. I, no. some, I don't know. I could be wrong, but we're going to figure something mm -hmm. out at some point. <laughs> and he doesn't feel right. Something about I this. I don't know what, like. I, I get that from him too. Like for some reason, I get really creepy vibes. Yeah, he gets, it's those <laughs> eyes, man. It's the shifty, Dad. shifty little like, glasses this guy has. Yeah, it's like I maybe it's just because half the people with glasses in this show are like horrible. I would like to say <laughs> that I have yet to find an anime character with round glasses who is not secretly a villain. So, right? Yeah, I, that's the thing. Unless they just really hate people with glasses, huh? They do. Well, it's because <laughs> like, you can do the thing where you like shade the eyes out oh, because yeah, of the glare, you, yeah. you know. Yeah, because that's you gotta look shifty like that. Yeah. So. Yeah, oh, for sure, <laughs> for sure. I just listen. This death of falling down the stairs is. It's either, I. It's either, uh, Oda is trying to say like it doesn't matter how strong you are, life is super short and brittle, like. It could right. end at any time. Yeah. Which is fair. It's like a valid point he could be yeah. making. Or what I feel yeah. is way more likely is like we are going to get something at some point, someday, about what happened to Kawina. And it's not she yeah. fell down the steps because this does not feel right at all. It, yeah. Like, I don't feel like that's how she would no. die. No. Like, especially considering, like, seeing what Zoro has been through and lived. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and she takes just a tumble down the steps and that's yeah, this it. Is not like, <laughs> even like either she was so right about that statement yeah. of like you're gonna be stronger than me she was so incredibly yeah. correct about that <laughs> or like <laughs> it was it was her boobs yeah it was dang it dang it she Those warned us boobs. she warned us beforehand <laughs> shoot oh you hate to see it you hate to see it <laughs> she lost her balance because of her boobs. She wasn't ready. <laughs> Tipped over. Tipped over. Tipped over. It's a bummer. You hate when it happens. It's a bummer. You, you <laughs> kill when you die. You literally die falling down steps because you're off balance. Yeah, right. <laughs> wow. It's rough. <laughs> this has been a very enlightening conversation. Um. <laughs> Okay, so moving all the way on. Unless you have something else about the backstory that you wanted to say. Uh, no. Yeah, moving, I think that's good. Moving all the way on, then. Uh, I love <laughs> just, like, a couple comments I had, right? Uh, I yeah. love the immediate level of trust between Luffy and Zoro. And I, like... Absolutely. It's so cool. Obviously, it's, like, super cool to see, right? But, like, I yeah. love that Luffy just, like, trusts Zoro to take Morgan to like make sure he doesn't get cut i just right. it's so like they just met and they already have this bond i love it zoro is like i'm i'm down i'm down with you 
Like I'm, I'm riding with yeah. you now. And Luffy is just like, he's gonna stop it. I love it. I mean, obviously, as the story goes, that only gets deeper. But I really liked seeing it. Right. I just liked seeing it. Yeah. And then Kobe, Definitely. man. Kobe is going places. Kobe. All right. He's going Kobe, places. Kobe, I love the Luffy like eggs him on and gets him to punch him in the face. I love the Kobe punched right. him in the face. This is insane yes. because like everything the Kobe Kobe has been scared of, Luffy has punched and defeated. And so like right. for him to hit Luffy is so incredibly like brave yeah. all at one time. I just like yeah. I really like it. I really like it. Yeah. And I, it doesn't end and bad, you know? Like they don't leave like hating yeah. each other. It's just like it's just like, I really like that Luffy did that. I, it's such a fun way yeah. to do what he had to do there. Right. And just, like, the fact that, yeah, you said, like, he has defeated all of the enemies that Kobe has faced, right? And won against them. Yeah. Like, the just that fact alone, you would think, would stop Kobe from, like, doing something like punching him. But, and it's also the fact that he doesn't realize, Kobe doesn't realize until after he punches him, what Luffy is doing. Like, he doesn't realize it until right. after the situation has happened. So you can see just in this very short period of time how much Kobe has grown as a person yeah. um, that wants to achieve his goals. Because at that moment, Luffy, he seems like he's actively trying to do something to stop his goals from happening, right? But obviously, you know, he has other intentions in, you know, saying that so that, uh, like, he will not be viewed as their friends or whatever. Um, right. And, like, that's just so amazing to me. Just how much uh, Kobe's personality developed in such a short period of time. Yeah. 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 It's just, it's just really good. It's just Kobe. It's, I just like Kobe, you know? I hope yeah. that Kobe does well for himself. I, I wish him the best as we go forward. <laughs> <laughs> Knowing full well where he is right now, I wish him the best. <laughs> <laughs> I wish him the best, right? Now. Uh, uh, yeah. Do you have any other, any other thoughts? Anything that I that we missed? Um, I don't think so. I think we pretty much covered everything I was thinking about. Nice, nice. So every week, nice. we'll go over. <laughs> uh, at the end. You know, we'll go over uh, what the favorite arc is up to that point, which at this point is <laughs> uh, it's the Romance Dawn arc, which is one of yep. one. So that's that's going to be the favorite for both of us. Um, yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine that these will probably be similar. And then I was uh, the your favorite character in that arc. So I, I say it that way to be like, you don't have to have like a running May, like favorite character like just like a character that you really liked in a certain arc like in whatever yeah. arc we read I think it'd be interesting to, to go over that and then give some variety to that position um, right so I think yeah. in this arc right I'm gonna say that I, I, I gotta say that Zoro is my favorite I just Zoro is really cool mm -hmm. to me yeah I just really like Zoro yeah I would probably go with Zoro too, honestly. Yeah. Just because, like, this is a really good introduction to his character, I think. Yeah. Um, and I really do love, like, what Oda does in, like, you know, developing what the outside world sees of him and then what he's actually like. Yeah. Yeah, it is good. I, yeah, he's good. Oda's really good as a writer, as I've said. But, um, yeah, but Zoro is really cool. So, Yeah. All right. Well, hey, if you don't have anything, we'll we'll wrap it up. Uh, so next week, uh, for so if you read along with us, please do. We'd love that. Um, next week we're doing the Orange Town arc, which is from chapter eight through chapter twenty-one. Uh, so that's it's uh, fourteen chapters. So literally double the chapters this week. So I'll have to apparently edit my thoughts down quite a bit because we did a whole hour and a half on seven chapters. <laughs> so I will work on editing that, that down. But uh, thanks, guys, for listening to the Pillow Fort podcast, and we'll catch you next time.